Thanks for clicking on to the Saturday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. Hope everybody is well and enjoying their weekend so far. The stratospheric polar vortex is fairly strong and it is continuing to cool as we go through uh, the upcoming week or so here. You can see here this is the initial of the NSEP model looking all the way out to 240 hours. So we're skipping well out uh, in time, 10 days from now, of course. And we're seeing little in the way of change. We're continuing to see that core uh, cooling um, down towards the what minus 70 to minus uh, 75 range. And then even skipping out to the very end of the period, 384 hours away. And you can see that uh, there is, if anything, a little bit of warming taking place uh, over the continents, as you can see. But if you go down to the 50 HPA level, which is... Um, within the upper portion of the the lower the lower stratosphere where the kind of the stratosphere meets the, the, the troposphere we've got a quite a different look if you notice here where we've got um, some uh, kind of warmer temperatures and also uh, some higher pressure within this level of the atmosphere and this is interesting because it shows that the the stratosphere and the troposphere you know the polar vortex anyway isn't uh, particularly coupled. If we go out to the, the 168 hour period, you can see here that we have an area of blue representing cooling at this level uh, over Scandinavia. Keeping an eye on that because that can sometimes translate to lower pressure over this region underneath that. If we play through to about 240 hours, though this is 10 days from now, you notice that we are starting to see that area of blue retreating away from Europe and away from Scandinavia. And as we go out to 360 hours, uh, you can see here that we it's continue to see that area of blue um, moving away from Europe. Notice also that we do have a uh, potential warming taking place uh, extend from Alaska over the top of North America, Greenland and the UK and Europe here. So in essence, in my opinion anyway, this could open the door to something more high latitude blocking like during the, the portion of November here. Uh, but if you look at the, the CFSV2, the month of November is quite different at 500 millibars. It's indicating a strong positive over Scandinavia. Uh, region to the west of the UK. Of course, if you get a strong positive over Scandinavia, you could start to see colder air coming around the top, underneath the high, and, and towards the UK. So, of course, um, you know that type of look isn't necessarily a negative. But notice here that as we go into the month of December, a very interesting uh, scenario takes place. Start to see blocking over the Arctic, over Greenland, over the North Pacific. And we've got a trough underneath extending from the Atlantic towards Iberia, towards the southern half of the British Isles. Certainly that potentially could correlate to a colder look. Um, so it's it's all worthwhile looking at the big picture instead of just focusing on one particular thing. But I just thought I'd want to highlight that, you know, the 10 HPA level is one thing. Looking at the tropospheric polar vortex is a completely different one because, yes, they can couple... Yes, if you get strong warming taking place or strong cooling taking place at 10 HPA, that can filter down through the, the levels of the atmosphere and affect essentially our weather in the 500 millibar level. But at the moment, the two aren't connected. And with a, you know a degree of warming within the tropospheric polar vortex um, and the, the, the partial way of that, that uh, core of cold air, there is always room and potential for some development of high latitude blocking as we go through the month of November here. So just something that I'm at least keeping an eye on uh, quite closely. CFSV2, this is November uh, for Europe. And you can see here what it's representing. This, is, of course, is uh, December. Quite an interesting look with the trough where it is positioned. Uh, we've got the positive to the north as well. So certainly, you know, that would be nice, but... The problem that we've got with these models, and especially longer range models, is they go back and forth and you get one great run and then it just shows the complete opposite perhaps a day later. So all these things need to be taken 
with a pinch of salt. Snow cover, of course, as you would expect, m moving away from October into November, you would expect snow cover to increase. Remember the cold that they shot through the Midwest and into the Southeast over you know, the last several days. That has now been replaced by warmth. We've shifted the trough to the west over the western United States. So instead of Chicago seeing its first snow of the season, potential for Denver, Cheyenne and places like that could well see their first covering of snow. Notice the difference here. This is off the GFS. This is the northern hemisphere view. We're starting to, of course, increase snow significantly over over Asia, uh, as well as northern portions of North America. Look at the difference by the time we reach uh, the 6th of November. An increase in snowfall quite a bit across the northern half of the United States, if you notice. Much of Canada covered in snow. We've got much of Russia covered in snow. Scandinavia, we're seeing snow. We're also getting flirts with snow even into the north of the UK as well. Um, so that is certainly worth um, paying attention but of course it's going, it's going to be November so you would expect that a hundred percent looking at the Europe view here just um, very quickly and you can see what I'm talking about in terms of the potential for snow as we play through the loop now we are going to see uh, a surge of warmth uh, continuing and um, with low pressure to the southwest of the, the British Isles if it's whether whether it's the southwest or the west of the UK when you've got high pressure dominating much of Europe, you're going to be importing air from the south. So we're going to continue this warm than normal theme. But as I play through this loop, you can see the snow increasing over the eastern portions of Europe. Then as we push towards the very early stages of November, we get that little flirt with snow over the northern half of Scotland. Pretty, um, you know, you know, insignificant, of course, but uh, nonetheless, potentially heading in the right direction looking at the overview chart over the next wee while go back to the current setup here and you can see that we've got another area of low pressure spreading wind and rain northwards over the uk along with warmth as we push into the early portion of the next week we've got a fairly deep area of low pressure to the west more wind more rain more warmth and I think that is going to take us through the remainder of November. You notice these systems always stay to the west, high pressure over the European continent. So we just maintain this theme as we go forward. At the very end of the loop, we've got systems more coming from west to east. If you notice here, according to the, the GFS uh, run, this is the 12Z run, as you can see. And uh, finally, I'm going to show you the 850 temperatures here because it is a fairly warm outlook we've got some of this warmth by the way coming out of africa through the mediterranean in the central portions of europe here these areas of low pressure continue to uh, pull warmth up from the south and we could be talking about a run of exceptionally warm conditions by the way towards the very end of the month uh, look at that there that would certainly be uh, bringing temperatures exceptional for the time of the year probably into the british isles here and um, so the warm theme continues I'm afraid as we go through the remainder of October. Look at this here for the 31st. Could see some very warm temperatures into the southeast. While we could be seeing increasingly colder coming in from the west. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Please like, share and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. And we'll be back hopefully again tomorrow with more. Bye for now.